What's happening? Brian Tong here, and welcome to the Apple Bite for everything good and bad inside the world of Apple. It's a short week for the Thanksgiving holiday in the U.S., and guess where I'm going? Yeah, it starts with an H and ends with an I, and I'll read your comments in the guesses below. Now let's get to the show, and the biggest story in the Apple world is all about the antennas in the iPhone 7, and don't start screaming antenna gate right now. Now we've been talking all about on the Apple White Extra Crunchy audio podcast, so check it out if you want to dig even deeper inside the world with Apple. But here's the breakdown of what we know so far. Apple is using two different LTE antennas inside the iPhone 7. An Intel modem is inside AT&T and T-Mobile phones, while a Qualcomm modem is inside the Verizon and Sprint iPhones. Now, independent testing by Cellular Insights found that the Qualcomm-based phones, like the Verizon iPhone 7, outperformed an AT&T iPhone 7 by 75% when it came down to data speeds with a low signal. Think about something like one dot on your phone, and I knew something was different, especially on my daily commute. Even before this was revealed, that hasn't been disputed. Now, a recent report from Bloomberg claimed Apple might be throttling Verizon's LTE performance with a Qualcomm modem in order to make it perform similarly to the Intel chip that's in other phones. The Qualcomm hardware is theoretically capable of a maximum 600 megabits per second for download speeds compared to the Intel modem that tops out at 450 megabits per second. Recode has now confirmed this to be true. But really, there's nothing we can do about Apple holding back the Qualcomm modem chip because it's in their best interest to have all phones perform similarly. Even with LTE connectivity, you know, you have location, signal strength, number of users on the network, the demand for data depending on your task, it's going to change. So here's Apple's official statement. In all of our rigorous lab tests based on wireless industry standards, in thousands of hours of real world testing and in extensive carrier partner testing, the data shows there is no discernible difference in the wireless performance of any of the models. Now, I'm more curious how much better would iPhone 7s be across the board if all of them would have been equipped with the Qualcomm modem? And the answer is we'll never know. But again, this is not another antenna gate. I know you might be kind of frustrated, but you're gonna have to get over it. It's more like a what could have been, but it's not. So, you know what? Let's just move right along. All right, a Bloomberg report also says Apple has completely disbanded its wireless router division in order to sharpen its focus on products that can make them more revenue according to their sources. The decision hasn't been publicly announced. We haven't seen an airport refresh since 2013. You know what? I'm just going to throw a bad apple on that one. Yeah, and it's likely we'll never see a new Airport Express, Airport Extreme, or Airport Time Capsule, so don't buy one right now. And let's be honest, they may look pretty-ish, but companies like D-Link or Netgear are ahead in the game. Now, Apple also recently stopped making its own external monitors and instead announced new displays in a partnership with LG, but come on, they're really LG displays. We won't give airports the Apple Byte send-off until they are officially announced as gone, so uh, we'll just have to wait for that. And Apple's now stepping up to handle iPhone issues that we've criticized them for ignoring. Apple has launched an iPhone 6 Plus touch disease repair program. They call it the multi-touch repair program, where you can get your 6 Plus repaired for $149. But you know what? It's a little too late for me, especially for an issue that started popping up a year later. And guess what? We're now at year two. Now, most people have already taken the most popular Apple iPhone repair route. It's called buying a new iPhone. And the Big A has also opened up another repair program for iPhone 6S users whose devices may be unexpectedly shutting down. It only affects certain devices manufactured between September and October of 2015. You'll need to contact Apple to see if your phone's serial number is within this range, but Apple will replace the battery of your device free of charge. And just a fun video we're checking out. We've already ripped on the Apple book enough, and yes, I know it is still pretty. But 512 Pixels blogger Stephen Hackett created this fun video with some of the actual products side by side with the book, and I liked it. So I'm telling you about it so you can watch it. All right, that's going to do it for this week's show. You can email us at theapplebite at cnet.com or tweet me at Brian Tong. Thanks so much for watching. We'll catch you all next time for another bite of the apple.